Hello everyone and welcome to our lecture for this week, Pregnancy Coding. I just want to go over a few highlights again like usual and go over a few key components. So when we're coding pregnancy, the key terms that you want to look up or the main terms are going to be pregnancy, delivery, or abortion. And once there, you would go to pregnancy and then complicated by or pregnancy management affected by, delivery, abortion, they're, they're subterms under the main term. So make sure and check carefully for what it is you're coding. Pregnancy is something, of course, that happens during the, from conception up until delivery. Delivery would be something that happened from um, stage one of delivery or labor all the way to the end. And then abortion, of course, is when uh, the baby doesn't make it very long, any, any time, usually before 22 completed weeks. So along with abortion, there are some different terms that I wanted you guys to know. We have different kinds of abortions. Many times you're going to see SAB, which is spontaneous abortion. In documentation in hospitals or physician offices, many times they'll just write SAB, which means uh, miscarriage or spontaneous abortion. It's the same thing. The other thing you might see is an incomplete or complete abortion, a missed abortion, threatened abortion, and someone who has a habitual or recurrent abortion. And again, these are spontaneous acts. It's not when a patient goes in and electively chooses to have an abortion. These are spontaneous when the body, you know, for whatever reason, does not keep the baby or keep the fetus, actually, and expulses it or, or tries to expulse it. So a missed abortion is when the fetus has died before that 22 um, gestational age, 22 weeks and is retained in the uterus. So the, the female typically doesn't know that she has miscarried and, and the baby's been in there for a while, up to four weeks. A spontaneous abortion is when part um, of the products of conception have exposed um, up again until the 22 weeks. Habitual or recurrent abortion is spontaneous expulsion of a dead or non-viable fetus in three or more consecutive pregnancies. And again, that's something that we want to code because that's showing some kind of pattern, that's showing a history. Incomplete abortion is when some of the products of conception have been exposed, but not all of them. Complete is when all of the products of conception have uh, been exposed. And usually we have a pathology report to confirm this either way. And then a threatened abortion is when the patient's having you you know, usually like uterine bleeding in comes in and they recommend bed rest and, and not a lot of activity because the body may be trying to expose the, the fetus or products of conception, but at the time of the visit, they, the fetus is still um, viable. And typically the pregnancy will continue, but again, you know, every case is different. So when we're coding with ICD-10, in pregnancy coding, we need to know the trimester that our patient is in, right? So just to review, trimesters 1 through 12, or weeks 1 through 12, sorry, are trimester 1. Weeks 13 through 27 are trimester 2. And then weeks 28 through birth or delivery are trimester 3. Some other terminology when we're coding, we might see preterm delivery, term delivery, post-term delivery, or preterm labor, all these terms you're gonna see in the real medical record. So preterm is defined as coding purposes for anything before that 37th completed week. So it would have to be 37 and seven days to be completed week since there's seven days in a week, 37 and six days, um, or you know, 30, Eight weeks is not preterm because it's the 37th completed week is what defines preterm. Where term is from 38 weeks to 42. So from 38 weeks and zero days to 42 weeks and seven days. And then post term is anything after that 42nd completed week of gestation. Again, completed week is all seven days in that week. And why they use pre 
our term from 38 to 42 is there's always that plus or minus two weeks, right, where the patient might have her last menstrual period incorrectly, or she's measuring small, she's measuring big. So there's always a plus or minus two weeks, and that's what why the term is actually 40 weeks, right? If we think about like a textbook term, but we give or take that two week based on what could have happened at the time of conception and, and when we found out she was pregnant. So that's where we get those pregnancy dates. One thing I do want to highlight when you're coding is there are tons of pregnancy complications. Now, that doesn't mean there are major things where, you know, the, the maternal health or the newborn's health are at risk. It just means things are going on that the doctor needs to look at. Uh, we could have pre-existing conditions, like if a patient already is diabetic or a patient has hypertension or many patients have anemia. It's just normal. It's, it's a normal thing. And they're, again, not major, but they're things we code. So we would code pregnancy management affected by hypertension, management affected by anemia. And then if it's a pregnancy-related condition, then that's a pregnancy complicated by um, gestational diabetes or pregnancy-induced hypertension. Anything that might aggravate the pregnancy is a complication. I think many times we think complications are big, like major life-altering things. And with pregnancy, that's not the case. Anything even maybe minute, um, we're going to code it as a complication. So a normal pregnancy is 38 to 42 weeks um, gestation with an episiotomy. Anything outside of that is really not normal. So if the, if the patient, say, had a vacuum extraction, that is not normal. We would code um, delivery complicated by vacuum extraction. There's our diagnosis. Um, of course, we would code the outcome of, de of delivery, what kind of baby came out, and then you would code the procedure for the vacuum extraction. If the patient had, say, a first-degree tear, it's, again, very normal that when the baby comes out, if, the, if an episiotomy is not done, which they don't do a lot anymore, the mom's going to rip a little bit around the perineum, and that's, again, okay, but that's a complication. So we would code a pregnancy um, complicated by or delivery complicated by laceration, obstetrical laceration, and then first degree, second degree, third degree, all the way to fourth degree. Um, there's nuchal cords where the baby's wrapped around the umbilical cord. Sometimes it's around the baby's neck, um, and sometimes it's tight, sometimes it's compressed, sometimes it's not. The baby's in and out of that nuchal cord or out of that umbilical cord the whole time of pregnancy, right? Sometimes it gets tighter, especially the bigger the baby gets. So that's something that uh, we would code. Pregnancy, um, if the baby's breech, if there's more than one baby, that's a complication. Technically, you're only supposed to have one baby, right? One of my favorite OB docs told me, if you were supposed to have twins, God would have given us two uteruses. So anytime there's twins or triplets or quadruplets, etc. That's a complication of pregnancy because it's going to take a little bit more time resources for that mother. Um, I'm trying to think of some more common ones. Um, malpresentation, if the baby's turned the wrong way, if the baby um, has stress during delivery, you know, like bradycardia or something's wrong with the heartbeat, that's a complication. If the mom's really young, um, 16 and under is young for delivery as far as coding guidelines or really old. And again, I don't mean old, old, but um, 35 or older is um, advanced maternal age and we have to code that as a complication. So some terminology you're gonna see, if you ever see, um, you know, Gravita 2 para 1, for example, or Gravita 4 para 4. What that means, Gravita is the number of times a patient has been pregnant, and para is the number of live-born infants. So you could be pregnant once and have two live-born infants, right, if you had twins. You could be gravita one, para two. Um, but so for example, gravita two, para one means she's been pregnant once or twice and delivered once, and that she's currently pregnant. The other thing I wanted to talk about were stages of labor. There's three stages of labor. The first is when um, contractions begin true labor, not Braxton Hicks or false labor. 
and it continues until the cervix is completely dilated to a 10. The second stage of labor is after that complete dilation until the baby is delivered. And the third stage is the delivery of the placenta. We have Z codes when we're pregnant. Um, some of those might be if our patient had insufficient prenatal care, if they're coming in for a visit and everything's good, everything's normal, there's a normal pregnancy, just a management of that pregnancy. Again, nothing's wrong, we have nothing to code. Um, pregnancy state incidental, so that might be, say, um, we have a 12-week pregnant female who tripped and fractured her toe. Nothing's wrong with the baby, nothing's wrong with um, her pregnancy, she came in for something totally unrelated. We're going to code what was unrelated, so the fracture of the toe, and then we're going to use the Z code to show she's also pregnant. There's the Z code for supervision of a high-risk pregnancy. Again, somebody coming in um, for high risk, whether it's maybe she was a habitual or border, um, maybe she is advanced age. There might be different reasons for high risk. If someone's coming in for sterilization, um, they want their tubes tied, say, that's a Z code. If somebody's coming in for contraception, that's a Z code. Antinatal screening, again, maybe she's coming in for an ultrasound. Um, and then, of course, the outcome of delivery, which every time there's a delivery that you're coding on mom and a baby came out, you have to have the outcome of delivery Z code to show what came out. Do not put a newborn code. A newborn is what goes on baby's chart saying, hey, I'm a newborn. For mom's chart, you want outcome of delivery. And so that kind of segues me to my next slide. So once a baby is born, that baby gets his or her own chart. While the baby is in mom's belly, that's coded on mom's chart. But once baby's born, baby gets his or her own chart and his or her own codes. So if we're coding um, a pregnancy and delivery, then we're also coding a newborn because something came out of that delivery. So when you're coding a delivery, remember you code the diagnoses, right? What happened during her pregnancy or delivery and what came out of that delivery is our Z code. And then baby's chart, you're going to say, what kind of baby I am? Am I a newborn? Um, am I a single, a twin, a triplet? Was I born in a hospital, born outside of a hospital? Some other newborn Z codes um, you're gonna see are vaccinations or immunizations, especially if you work at say a physician's clinic or a peds clinic where you're getting the baby after they were born, maybe week, week two they're coming in for like a hep B or a well child check. They're just coming in, they're not sick, a baby's healthy, but they're just coming in for an exam. Those are some um, Z codes. Okay, so I have four cases uh, I wanted you guys to practice with. And again, I, I have to keep my lectures under the 15 minutes to keep my screencast-o-matic. So here are the cases. The next slide, I'm gonna show you the answers. Please write down the answers and then put them away and practice the cases first and then check the work to make sure that you are on the right track. I'm just gonna do the first one with you though. So my first coding practice, we have a 30 year old who's admitted for bleeding due to a retained placenta from a normal delivery four days earlier. So from right there, you should determine what's going on. Well, she's bleeding, why is she bleeding? A retained placenta. Why does she have a retained placenta? She delivered four days earlier. So my main term there is gonna be delivery. And then it's complicated, right? It's complicated from a placenta that's retained. So on my next slide, I have the answers and the steps I took. So 072.0, or that's um, actually the letter O, capital O, 72.0. I said that wrong. All the pregnancy codes in ICD-10 start with a capital O, not a zero. So that's one important thing to remember. And they kind of look like they blend together. So that first code is capital O, 72.0. So I went to delivery, complicated by placenta, retained with hemorrhage, and that's how you get that code. So the next cases, um, the answers are right here, so please take the time, go through them. There's a mom and a babe, which I really wanted you guys to practice. Again, outcome of delivery goes on mom, newborn goes on babe. 